No, that's me. Oh. Who is she and why does she have her own song? Did someone take my lunch? Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, marching in her own parade. Pepper Ann, she's like one in a million. Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, much too cool for seventh grade. No, it's cooler than Pepper Ann. She's her own biggest fan. Cool. Pepper Ann. A singing beater doll. Catch her if you can. I'm telling you, Fuzzy is semi-aquatic. How else did he stay underwater for so long in issue 87? He swallowed the time-release oxygen pill. For the last time, Fuzzy does not have gills. Hey, Pepper Ann. Is she talking to me? Are you sure she didn't say my cousin Stan or, or Black Forest Ham? Hey, Sketch. Uh, we were just talking about, um, uh, water? Numb fluid. What's up? I'm tossing a rager on Friday. You should show. Really? Uh, I mean, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, and, uh, tote your amigs. <gasps> An invite to Sketch's party! An eighth grade party, the coolest party of the year. How do you tote your amigs? Eighth grade lingo. Nikki, translate. Tote, to carry with or bring along. Foolish women, eighth grade lingo doesn't come from a reference book. It's a delicate amalgam of pop culture and social influences. Amig, look up Amig. Amid, amidst, amistad, nothing. I'm never gonna understand Sketch and her friends. Friends, Amig is amigo. She said to bring your friends. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to floss my teeth. Huh, I'm not surprised. I mean, the three of us are the coolest seventh graders around. <gasps> oh, my glasses! My comic! Ah, oh, my pocket dictionary. <clears throat> so, Trinket, did you hear about Sketch's party on Friday? It's only the buzz of the entire cheerleading squad. I heard they even invited some seventh graders. Oh, <laughs> that was me and Nikki and Milo, because, you know, they're my amigs. I could uh, talk to Sketch for you. Hi, no thanks. I don't need that kind of social pressure. Yeah? And this year, you, like, have to bring a date? Dates? No one mentioned dates. <gasps> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Pepper Ann. Those eighth graders are gonna eat you alive. Maybe if you caught mono, you could back out gracefully. There's a kid in the nurse's office who'll cough on you for ten bucks, but, like, you didn't hear it from me? <laughs> what do you feel is your strongest date quality? My encyclopedic knowledge of all things than thou. Okay, we'll be in touch. Okay, Milo, next one's for you. Quinn Mesro, what do you feel you can bring to the party? Thanks. We'll let you know. I'll call you. <laughs> Milo, no. If we show up at this party with the wrong dates, we might as well not show up at all. No! You're using the portalette when an if eight If you don't pay your check and vacate this booth in two seconds, I'm calling mall security. <laughs> we're narrowing down our date possibilities, but we're still scouring the museums for you. Oh, I've already decided on a date. I'm inviting Stuart Waldinger. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you were serious. I am serious. I'm going to ask Stuart Waldinger. What? Stuart Waldinger represents everything that is wrong with the seventh grade. Geekiness, bookishness, adolescent awkwardness. Whatever you do, don't invite Stuart Waldinger to... Nikki? He's a guest. You have to reconsider. Stuart Waldinger is not party material. <gasps> Why don't you take that hunk of hunk of hottie from the novel, Nook? Pepper Ann, he's 34. Age isn't as important as social savvy. Stuart will ruin our shot. Life out, princess. 
any future eighth grade parties. Pepper Ann, I like Stuart. I'm taking him to the party, and that's final. Okay. You think about it. You should go with me. Are you crazy? Crazy like a fox. You are definitely more of a fox. <laughs> Nikki, am I crazy? Or did I see someone outside giving away tickets to the Yo-Yo Ma concert? <laughs> Okay, I've narrowed my choices down to Alice Kane and Lola, the horchata girl from Castle Hazelnut. Uh-huh. I've got to convince Nikki not to take him. I don't know. They seem like they have fun together. Milo, this is not about fun. This is about an eighth grade party. Nikki can't take Stuart Waldinger. She can't. Way to lifeboat the life out of the rager. Oh, license to hurl. No, Pepper Ann. You're a meek male as a real return to sender. Don't feed the dorks, pumpkin. Hello. Dieter's here for your three o'clock. He's not the obvious choice, but foreign can translate to exotic. Reschedule. If Nikki won't listen to reason, I'll have to dig up some dirt. Where are you going? Geek Ground Zero. The remote control car race track. Hey, Pepper Ann. Wanna look through my click a pick? Uh, mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Stuart Waldinger, you just bought your ticket out of Nikki's life. Here, Nikki. I thought you should know. I know, Pepper Ann. I've always known. But now that you've come to terms with your gross lack of photography skills, we can get you some help. There! I'm sorry, Nikki, but Stuart Waldinger is seeing another woman. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Stuart. This is Thor. She's my adopted juvie. I'm helping her readjust to freedom. And what a wonderful job you've done. Oh, he just gives and gives and gives. Oh, is that seventh grader going to be okay? Do we care? Load. Want to go to Sketch's party with me? <laughs> no. You are going to Sketch's party with me. Hey, I asked you first. The party's tomorrow night. We have 24 hours to ditch the dead weight and save my... Uh, our reputation. I'm going to do Nikki the greatest favor of her life. I'm going to uninvite Stuart Waldinger. Stuart Waldinger, we have to talk. I know Nikki invited you, but... I... Oh, Nikki, she's the best. I just don't... How'd you do that? See, about Sketch's party. Look out! Whoa! Want to give her a spin? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... So, uh, how long have you known Nikki? Uh, oh, man, you're driving a fuzzy out of that thing. You read fuzzy? Nikki and I have a running argument about whether or not he has gills. Oh, fuzzy so does not have gills. Exactly. Oh, oh, turn. Hey, I did it. Look at that. I just... Nikki, I was just... leaving. So maybe Stuart Waldinger isn't as bad as you thought. I'll admit, he may not be that big of a dork, but he's still a dork. Two words, P.A. Ha. Arsh. Milo, tonight we have an opportunity to infiltrate the inner circle of ultra hypnosis. And I am not going to let anything blow that, including Stuart Waldinger. Hey. This may sound a tiny bit mm, brutal, but I have something to say. Is it my breath? <sighs> I, I wanted to floss, but... Uh, Nikki... I know that you like Stuart Waldinger a lot, but... Really? A, a lot? A lot? Uh, hi, I'm talking here. Now, this party is too important for you to... to, to uh... to show up with, uh... <laughs> it's just a... Sorry, Pepper Ann, what were you saying? It's not important. Let's go. You people make me sick. You, and you, and you, sitting on your eighth grade high horses and judging us. Sure, this guy may not fit into your perfect stereotype of hipness. 
But he is generous and smart and smart. And most importantly, he makes my friend Nikki happy. And if that's not load with you, we don't need to be at your little party. Whatever, Soapbox. Can you MacGyver the vinyl spinner? Oh, fully. Whoa, you gotta relax, Pepper Ann. Take it easy. Like Stu W. Dinger there. You know Stuart Walton? You know you know Stuart Walton? Sure. Stu kicks it at the Frappuccino fact. He's beat. But he's, and you're, he flaps about you lots. He said you're one load shachi. Uh, is that good? Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. I'm a pretty loady floaty, flip fly, amig toady. <laughs> Stuart Waldinger was cool. It doesn't matter how you look or where you hang. It all boils down to who you are. We are not stereotypes, Milo. We are people. Now, let's go out there and have us some fun. Come on, don't be shy. You're a great dancer. By coming up on one Saturday morning, we got lots of stuff, including more pepper in. It's the bomb. Okay, Bob. It's fly. Move on. It's really neato. We'll be right back to Disney's One Saturday Morning. <laughs> Kids say absolutely ridiculous stuff. We'll be back. So don't zap ya. Oh, good evening, Mother. Oh, hello, my little papula. Mother, I'm very excited about a party I'd like to attend, um, with your permission, of course. Oh, well, I'm not opposed to a good old-fashioned shindig. When is it? Uh, I'm sorry for the short m notice, but it's it's actually tonight. Oh, well, where is it? On the football field behind the rusted-out tackle dummies. Oh, well, it's 9 o'clock. When does this party start? Later. Peppy, no. You're too young to be staying out so late. <laughs> Mom, Nikki's parents and Milo's parents are letting them go? Well, Pepper Ann's parents says no. That is that, young lady. Mom, I hope you know you're flushing my life down the toilet. This is so unfair. Life is unfair sometimes, Peppy. Ask Amelia Earhart! All right, let's go. We're late. Milo, we have hours. Including the casual dinner at Greasy and Cheesy? The pre-party crunch pod tourney? Uh, after the pod tourney, I kind of have to come back here for a while. This wasn't discussed. How long do you have to be back for? Till my mom falls asleep and I can sneak out? <gasps> I swallowed my gum. Pepper Ann, no, don't sneak out. Nikki, this is the springtime late night flashback jam. The only jam of the year where the seventh, eighth, and ninth graders come together and hobnob as equals. Pepper Ann, I beseech you, talk to your mother. Nikki, the time for talk is over. Now is the time for action. I have to go. And when Craig sang an acoustic version of Hey You, well, that rocked. It was so worth sneaking out, Nikki. It was easily the best time I've had in my entire life. And a meraviglioso. I mean, it was wonderful, but... Oh, I could have used some more sleep. I dozed off during my Italian exercises, and now I'm having difficulty thinking in English, eh? P.A., check the new ish. Within a nutshell, the zeniest zine you've ever seen. You printed it on paper this time. The cardboard and the wet wipes kept jamming the printer. <clears throat> Guys, the ladies within the nutshell rocked. It rocked so hard. Well, we made a concerted effort to rock. Rocking was foremost in our minds. You guys inspired me. This is the first thing I've ever written that hasn't been for school. I call it, Why Detention is So Lame. Uh, I have to tweak the Mimeo. Uh, P.A., this... Well, it's... Did you read the part where I outlined why detention is so lame? I worked so hard on that. P.A., 
It shouldn't have been work. We're not looking for work. We're looking for stuff that's emotionally honest. Stuff that's real. Stuff that's... Within the shell. Less central nervous. More cardiopulmonary. We're looking for stuff that's emotionally honest. Within the shell. Why homework stinks. It just stinks. I hate it. I really hate... Have you ever felt like you were just waiting for that moment when you change? When you become that person you want to be? When you're not just a goofy seventh grader, but the real you all the time, without even thinking about it. I thought if I went to the springtime late night flashback jam, I'd have a moment like that. I felt bad about sneaking out, but I had to go to that party. Then I had one of those thoughts that just by thinking it wrecks everything. If I messed up at the jam, I would never recover. I'd be like the Peter Pan of dorkiness. So there I was, standing right in the middle of the biggest, raddest party I've ever been to. And all I could do was stand there because I was too afraid to say or do something stupid. Everyone was having a good time. Everyone was being themselves. All I was being was another goofy seventh grader locked to the punch bowl waiting to go home. I guess I'm still waiting, waiting for the day, the moment, when I'll finally become the real me. Stuart, stop the presses. PA kicked it cardiopulmonary. Uh, Milo, I, I just finished. Can't she kick it next issue? I'll get the recycling bin, buddy. You start reloading the type. Yes! Pepper Ann, your heart, your sensitives, I relate fully nuclear. Hush, the eighth grader that never speaks. Speaking. We understand why you were at the punch bowl, and we are really sorry if we made you feel uncomfortable. We know all too well how you felt, and now we see what indeed was up with that. We love you, Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann, although I still disapprove of your defying your mother, I have to say, your emotional honesty, your lack of misspellings. I am so proud of you! Where did you get that? Never you mind where I got it. You deliberately disobeyed me and snuck out in the middle of the night. But what if something terrible had happened? I had no idea where you were. A goalpost could have fallen on you. You could have gotten tetanus from those rusty tackle dummies. But... But take your butts up to your room this instant. You are grounded for two months. Mom. No. You just don't understand. Go to your room. Happy. Take this back up to the attic where you got it. Property of Lydia Lily. No peekies. March 28, 1968. Dear Diary, I wish I wasn't so weird. Ugh. Why can't I just stop thinking sometimes? I was at my locker today, and John Memminger and his friends were walking by. Before I knew it, they invited me, 7th grade square me, with 8th grade groovy them to the late night neon carpet baggers hootin' nanny. I broke Mom and Dad's trust like a dime store piggy bank and snuck out. It felt like I didn't even have a choice. But when I got there, I froze. I was with the keenest kids in school, watching my favorite group, and I couldn't move. What if I goofed up or said something stupid or knocked over my cola bomb? Then, when I saw everyone grooving, I froze even more. Because no one felt like me. No one was weird like me. No one was alone like me. Well, gotta go. Mom's calling. Yours truly, Lydia Lily. P.S. Keep on trucking. Hey, wait a minute. Mom, I... I hadn't read the whole article until now. Oh, Peppy, even though it doesn't always seem like it, I do understand. Oh, do you? We've been butting heads so much lately, but the thing is, we're not so different. I even snuck out once when I was your age. Exactly. And I got caught. Janie saw me and tattled like the baby she... Anywho, I got grounded for two months. 
It was definitely tough, but it wasn't unfair. But it was unfair that I didn't hear you out. Maybe you weren't too young to go. I should have talked to you instead of saying no right off the bat. But you have to give me a little more notice, okay? Okay. I'm sorry, Mom. I shouldn't have broken your trust like that. It was a stupid thing to do. Oh, you're my little pepula. Mom, I'll always be your little pepula. Just not around my friends or within a mile of school. Oh, honey. <laughs> go to your room. No TV. No blading. No hanging with friends. I'm grounded. And you know what? I deserve it because I broke my mom's trust. Sure, she sometimes does things that make me want to run out of the room screaming. But when it comes down to it, we're really not so different. And when we talk about things, well, we can work anything out. The thing is, not only is she always there for me, but she's been there too. So, I'll say it. I love my mommy. So, uh, what'd you think? Let me put it this way. If I wanted mainstream propaganda, I'd read Hazelnuts and Bolts. Uh, mm-mm. Oh, Pepper Ann, it was twice as touching, three times as tender. But alas, I think this kind of emotional openness is too truthful for the masses. They're just not ready yet. I love it. The only good zine is a barely red zine. With a circulation plunge like this, within the nutshell will become stuff of HMS legend. Great. Glad to help. Kids say absolutely ridiculous stuff. We'll be back. So don't zap ya. Hi, Mom. Peppy, I read your new article and... And, and, and I'm so proud you're my daughter. So am I still grounded? Oh, honey, of course you are. Here, I made you this scrapbook. <laughs> I need to collect myself tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. Pepper Ann will be right back on Toon Disney.